guys, welcome to my dark cave. Oh my gosh. We have a pretty plain and dark background today. I'm so sorry for that, but it is what it is at the moment. Today, I am excited because we're gonna be duping ColourPop with ColourPop. <laughs> it's no shock, it's no surprise. ColourPop comes out with so much stuff. They're constantly releasing new collections. They're constantly doing new collaborations. They have specific stuff with Ulta. They now have specific stuff with like Ulta in Targets. I think that's like its own thing even. And with that, there's just like no possible way they couldn't dupe each other first off. Like there's no way if you're coming out with that much stuff that you're not going to be duping past palettes that you've had. And at the rate that they release stuff, sometimes they're duping stuff that I feel like has come out more recently than not. So I have four of these bigger palettes from ColourPop. These retail for $35, but you can get them on deals at different times. I have the Rock Candy, the Stone Cold Fox, Smoke and Roses, and the Bear necessities and I thought I would try my hand at duping some of the newer neutral releases that they have because these are all more neutral leaning palettes. What is so awesome if you guys did not know is that the palettes like this and most of ColourPop's palettes actually can be depotted quite easily just like with Natasha Denona. You guys know I go on and on about Natasha Denona and how you can take the shadows out and that is the same for the ColourPop one. So I've had this idea for a while of wanting to create quads or just do some similar things as I do with any palette where the shadows can easily become single shadows and then go back to their place once you're done with it. And so that's what we're doing today. I've never done it with the ColourPop shadows and I've wanted to for a while. I also really wanted to do it because ColourPop is more affordable and I know Natasha Denona can be kind of expensive. So if you don't have Natasha Denona at home, you could do this with your ColourPop shadows, breathe new life into your eyeshadow collection, send off new releases if you don't want to be buying those things. And I think it's really fun. So that's what this duping exercise really is to me. It's just getting creative and excited about the makeup that you already have and I hope it inspires you to do the same with whatever you have at your house. So I'm like filming this whole intro and I realize like I have no eye makeup on bitch. You have no eye makeup on. What the fuck are you doing? There will be an eye look at the end of this <laughs> video and I haven't filmed it yet so stay tuned for that but the palettes that I do my best to dupe in this video are the fairy well palette this is very neutral I was kind of interested in it and I just thought it was pretty and I thought it'd be pretty easy to dupe so that's one I also did the box of chocolates palette that just came out and duped that out the best that I could and then I also put in the troublemaker palette this one I don't think is available on the site anymore individually but I really like this color story when it came out the theming the packaging all of that was sucking me in so I thought I would do my best to recreate it with other color pop it's like the same brand I'm not even recreating it with a more expensive brand or a different like it's the same <laughs> the same brand. So I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's just get into duping. All right. Hi guys. So these are the palettes that we're going to be working from today. I have just spent so much time sitting here and labeling all of these eyeshadows. So that way when I take them out, I can put them back just like I do with my Natasha Denona shadows. Let me get these babies all opened up. We have tons of shadows to work with. I also do have my smaller palettes here. I decided to pick these just in case I wanted to reach for one of these. So I have these all out and these are all that smaller pan size. They've started doing like a more quarter actual like larger eyeshadow size as well. And I decided not to pull them for just this video because I want them all to be cohesive in the same size. But all of these I should be able to take out shadows if I wanted to really. This is probably my oldest color pop, the brown sugar, love that one. And then lust for dusk, love that one too. Anyway, once I do all the color stories, I'm going to pick the one that I want the most, and I'm gonna put it in my Raw Beauty Christie palette, which is empty. I actually depotted this, and so um, a couple of the shades actually are in the Rock Candy palette because this actually came with some pressed glitters, and I try my best as much as I can to not get the pressed glitters, so I actually replaced those shadows in here with other powdered eyeshadow, and one of them is Raw Beauty Christie. Anyway, let's start with the Fairy Well palette. This is a pretty basic palette, but I'm not gonna lie, like I took a look at this, I thought it was pretty, I like these neutrals, so I definitely think this one should like not be hard at all to dupe with these bigger palettes. So I'm gonna go through and pick them and put them off to the side. I just use a little pin tack to pick out the shadows out of the, the base, but you could use like a magnet or whatever else you might like. Thank you. 
Okay, I think I came to my first kind of crux in the road. I don't have a gold and there is like a gold glitter in here and also almost like a, a warm silver shadow in here that I also feel like I think might have glitter in it as well. So I'm gonna see if I have something from a different palette to pull in for that. I might not. I feel like a lot of the palettes that I've got have a lot of cool tones in them. I have this gold. Maybe that. Yeah, I think the gold from this misunderstood palette, which is so old, um, this is like the villains. Oh God, I'm breaking it. Wait, do these not pop out? Maybe this doesn't pop out. Oh no, it does. It does pop out. Okay, we're gonna put that gold in for the actual gold. Just <laughs> push that in. Okay, we did it, we did it. Also, if you've seen this, I've been painting, so that's all that is. Okay, let me take these off now that we at least have a color story. All right, so here we are with the color story. I feel like I duped it pretty good. We're gonna get swatches and like compare them to see how close it really was, but I feel like overall it was pretty simple. Like I didn't have to do too much searching except for the glitters. Those are like the real difference, but otherwise I feel like it's decently close because it is a lot of neutral. So let's get swatching. This first shade here, this comes from the smoke and Roses palette. It's the first shade in that palette and it's just a champagne shimmery color. This does have a bit of a gold to it. The one in the palette might not be golden. It might be a little bit more icy, but I feel like for our purposes overall, it works. There's also gold in the palette, so I think it's nice as well. Next is a shadow from the Bare Necessities palette. This is the fourth shade in the palette and this is just a taupey uh, kind of gray, but it also leans... <laughs> Let me really get a swatch here. Um, it also leans a little bit like pinky gray, if that makes sense. I'm really trying to get a swatch built up. Um, I feel like that one's pretty similar, but I had a lot of choices to pick from. I feel like between all of the palettes that I had, a lot were very similar. Then next we have a light pink color. This one I have is from the Smoke and Roses palette. This is the 10th shade in the palette. And this is a light matte pink. I feel like it's really deepening up on my skin. It's interesting. I feel like this one also kind of was doing that, but that's the matte pink. And then last for the top row, this shade is from the Rock Candy palette. This is the fourth shade in there. I feel like that palette specifically does have a lot of really nice textural shadows. And I loved swatching and finding the shimmers for this palette because they're all just so pretty. Like I feel like I give a lot of my high-end palettes a lot of love, but this is, beautiful you know it's really beautiful and i really wanted to try to get the right tone of like almost this rose gold color that i was seeing in the palette and i feel like this does a pretty good job next for the palette was like a light another light kind of champagne -y shade this one had a little more gold to it um this color is from the smoke and roses palette it's the 13th shade i really wanted to make sure this this was different enough from the other shadow we just swatched. Like, I really didn't want them to be too similar. Then for the gold glitter, this is one from the Misunderstood Villains palette. I think this might actually have glitter in it now that I'm swatching it. Seems like there's some chunky glitters. It's not a full glitter shadow, but anyway, that's the only real gold I have. I, ha I don't have any of the really warm palettes. I've definitely gone for more neutral and cool tones as I've like added more ColourPop to my collection. And so that's, that's what I have to work with, that's it. For the next shadow, I also didn't have anything quite like this. I think it's a really pretty color in the palette. It's almost looking like a soft, warm silver almost, I don't know. So I just did my own thing the best I could that I felt like added something to the palette, went with the rest of the colors, as well as not like replicating any of the other colors. This shadow here is from the Rock Candy palette. It's, it's the 23rd shade in there. I love it, it's so pretty, um, but definitely not the same. That one's quite different. Then we move on to the last shade in the second row. This is like a terracotta. It's like a deeper color than the pink. I really love that matte color. I think it's really nice. When I was swatching these, I was like, dang, these are swatching nice. That one is from the Rock Candy and it is shade number nine. On to the last row, this next color is another matte. This one is from the Stone Cold Fox and it is 
a nice deeper gray taupe kind of color. It's not super deep. I don't feel like this palette in general goes very deep. There's like two colors at the end and that's it. Um, but I do think that one matched it pretty well. I had a couple of options, honestly, to dupe that one out. Next, I really liked this bronze that's in here. It's like a golden bronze, but it kind of leans a little cool or neutral as well. So the shade I went with is from the Bare Necessity palette. This is the 26 shade in that palette. I had another one I could have gone with, but I thought this one texturally was more my style and I really love it. The next, this one looked kind of purple in the palette. Like, like it was a deep color, a matte color, um, and it's like brown, but it had this tinge of purple. So I thought this one actually covered it pretty well. It's from the Stone Cold Fox and it's the 30th shade, the last shade in the palette. So that's what it looks like. Um, and that is the deepest matte in here. I'm gonna zoom us out a little bit so we can get that last swatch in, but I think we're doing pretty well so far. And then last, this was like a shimmery, grayed, charcoaled, black kind of. So I went with the Rock Candy shade number 19. I hope this will look as deep as it does, but I absolutely loved how much shimmer was in this color. Like a really pretty eye. I'm excited for that one. And that is the palette swatched out. So here's the palette all swatched out. You'll have to tell me what you think in terms of duping. I think it's pretty good. Like the pink shadow might be a little too pink and not like lighter, but other than that, I feel like so much of this palette looks like it. Maybe this color is a little gray instead of brown, but I think it's quite pretty. And I had a lot of fun actually trying to find these shadows. It was nice having a bit of a template, you know, uh, but actually just being able to dupe with the same formula, the same brand, everything. I think it's pretty damn close. I'm pretty happy with it. So the next palette that I wanna dupe is the Not A Box Of Chocolates palette. And this one's a little bit bigger. It it has square pans, so it's not gonna match in that way, but I do feel like we can do it. It's all neutrals once again, I, like we have the neutrals here. I've left all the shadows that I've used out off to the side. If I need to pull them for this palette, then I will, but I think we can maybe dupe it without it. And yeah, I'm just gonna get as close as I can. I like this palette. I think it's really pretty, but I feel like, I mean, I have it hidden amongst all these shadows. So let's find it. Okay, I won't lie to you, that definitely was harder than I thought it was gonna be. I also made a sub uh, that was like for different finish just because I did not realize until I was making this that there's a lot of mattes in here, like so many matte browns. I did my best to try to like suss out the differences between them and get as close as possible, but there were a few that were hard and I feel like actually unique in here. So we'll talk about that as we go, but let's get to swatching first. The first shadow in here is from the Bare Necessities palette. It is the first shadow in there. It's like a light golden champagne. I mean, so similar to the last one. It's kind of like a, a satiny shade. So it definitely has a shimmer, but it's not full metallic. Then there was like a light matte peachy color. And this was really the only option within everything that I had. This is from the Bare Necessities as well. It's the shade number 10. And I felt like that one matched it pretty dang well. Maybe a little brighter and peachier. Then I had to reach for that gold again from the Villains palette. 
I did not have this gold. So I'm definitely, if you know, I were going to go buy some ColourPop, what I'm missing are like golden shades, warm shades, those types of things, which I never thought I'd say because I feel like that's what I've seen such an overabundance for, but I guess cool tones and uh, neutral tones have been popular probably for the last couple years now. Then we move on to the last shade and this one was so tough, you guys. This one, I had to pull this from what palette? I think I pulled it from the Brown Sugar palette. It was the closest thing I had. I needed something that had that warm yellow undertone to it and it was so difficult to find, you guys. That's the closest I could do, but I do feel like that one's quite unique, at least to the palettes that I own and I don't think this one quite does it, but. I did my best. This next brown was also a little bit difficult. I decided to go with something that was warm. I felt like what this palette was really doing is adding quite a bit of warmth, but also some other cooler neutral shades too. And I wanted this shadow to give that. So this is from the Bare Necessities. This is the shade 11 in that palette. Uh, but the one in the palette here, it almost looks more like a camel color, like with a lot of yellow to it. Um, and again, I didn't feel like I really had that. This one leans warm, but it's more like orangey. And this orange is also a little bit almost like it has some pink to it. Next in the palette, this is like a really textured shade. I'm not sure if this is an actual glitter, but I decided to pull, I believe again, from my other palette that I already <laughs> made. Uh, I just felt like this one was so perfect. And again, I don't have a lot of those like bronzy shades necessarily. So this one is from the Bare Necessities. It's shade number 22. And I really liked that one. Next, this is a bit of a cooler matte color. I don't know if this is gonna go as deep as it looks in the swatch here. Mine was a little bit lighter and I felt like all the deeper colors didn't have the right tone. So I decided to go with the tone that I felt like matched, but this one is lighter in value. I think that's correct. Anyway, this is from the Rock Candy palette and that's shade number 11. And then last for the second row, this is like a rose gold color. I actually initially had this shade there, but then once I got down here, I was like, oh, that has to go here. So um, I decided to pick this one and this is actually from an old, old palette. This is one of the shadows I subbed into the Rock Candy because of the glitter. So um, I don't know what it is. I've just labeled it as Rock Candy 17, so I know where it goes, but that's not where it's actually from. I'm not entirely sure sure, but it's just a nice kind of rose gold color. Moving down in the palette, this next one, I really wanted to pick like a neutral bronze. And I think this one's actually really, really good for the palette, like as a dupe. This is from the Bare Necessities. It's shade number 26. And I really love that shadow. Next, we needed a warm brown. And this was also tough to try to like make sure all my browns in my palette had enough difference between them while I was also trying to match. So I went with the reddest brown that I feel like I could find that I felt like matched best anyway, um, in conjunction with everything else. So that's from the Bare Necessities number 21. I feel like for this palette, a lot came from the Bare Necessity because that's the most neutral out of everything I have. The Stone Cold Fox is very cool. Smoke and Roses, as well as Rock Candy, have a lot of cool tones, grays, silvers, and mauves to them. Then next, this one is another shadow I really like. Like, I want this on my eyes so bad. I really wanted to add the texture here. This one is from the palette, the Smoke and Roses. Ooh, so good. So good. It's like leaning on cool toned, but kind of bronzy, kind of rose gold, but not super warm. And I love those types of colors. Last in that row, this is supposed to be a deeper brown than the other one in this palette. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that was happening. It's light, but it's there. And I also wanted to make sure it wasn't as warm as this color, because I feel like that's what's happening in the palette. So this one is from the Bare Necessities, it's shade number 12, and I think that one works pretty well. I mean, all of these browns, it's hard to 100% tell when you're just doing it online, you don't have everything in front of you, but I do feel like it's pretty dang good. And a lot of these browns, like just the slightest tweak here and there, if you're trying not to buy you know, the new palette or wanna use what you have, I feel like those tiny little tweaks aren't the biggest deal necessarily. Moving on to the last row, we have another matte, and this one is the deepest of the browns and also kind of the coolest. 
And I feel like I accomplished that with this color as well. This is the shade 23 from the Bare Necessities. I'm telling you that palette came in. That is what I doped most of this out with. Next, this one I thought was kind of hard to find, but this was also the perfect shade I feel like for it. It's pretty close. The one in the palette looks like it almost has like a darkened base with this like maroon burgundy shimmer on top. And I feel like this is as close as we're gonna get. This is from the Bare Necessities and is number 20. It also has like a maroon quality to it and just the tiniest bit of depth in the base. Not the same I think as maybe in the palette, but close enough for me. So unfortunately my camera died, so I'm refilming the last two swatches here. So if things look a little different, that is why. But for this last shade here, this is where I switched it up because looking at the last two shades in the palette, they're both so dark and one is more of like a charcoal brown gray and the other one is like a charcoal black gray. <laughs> they're both mattes and I just felt like they were too similar and I was realizing there just weren't enough shimmers in this palette for me personally. So I did some customization and tweaking like I tend to do. So I went with a similar charcoal brown gray type color but this is more of a satin. This is from the Smoke and Roses palette shade number 24 and I really like that this is a satin where it doesn't have like a ton of metallic texture or shine, but it's definitely not matte. And I think it's just like a fun addition. Those are the types of shades I like. But for the last shade, I did go with something that was more of that charcoal gray brown. I don't know why this one is pressed so hard, but it feels so different than like all of the shadows. I really gotta like get in there with my finger. This is the darkest shade in the palette. It's from Smoke and Roses. It's shade number 28. Yeah, I think it's nice. I contemplated putting a black in, but I decided not to because, I don't know, the black wasn't in there. There is a black in every single one of the bigger palettes, so I almost wanna use it, but um, I think it works out nice. So that's the second half of the palette swatched out. But now I'm gonna show you my swatches against their swatches to see how similar they really are. All right, so here are the swatches swatched out like how they are on their swatches. I feel like overall it's pretty good. I think the biggest thing is mine maybe doesn't go quite as deep with some of the shimmers, like specifically these shimmers here. It doesn't go quite as deep. This matte also doesn't go as deep. This isn't as deep either. <laughs> um, and obviously I switched out this color, but otherwise, I mean, I think, you know, overall it's still pretty good. Some pretty looks to be had. I feel like it gives off the box of chocolates vibes. It's just not exact. Okay. The last palette that I'm going to try to dupe out, this is the Troublemaker palette. I actually really like this one. I love the packaging. I love the theming. I love so much about it, but I feel like for the bulk of this palette, I'm definitely going to be able to dupe it. There are a few duochrome shades in here and in these small pans, specifically from ColourPop, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have those exactly, just in my collection. I'm sure they've done similar stuff in other palettes and other pan shapes and forms and whatnot. And for sure, I have equivalent to what these duochromes are, if not like 10 billion times better in my collection already from single indie shadows. So I'm not worried if I can't exactly dupe them from ColourPops, but I'm gonna do my best. And I think that we'll have some fun mauve shades, hopefully, because we have some some of these palettes that have those, but let's see how close we can get.
All right, so here is my selection of shadows. It was difficult to do this, but I wanna point out that between the actual picture of the palette and the picture of the swatches, you can kind of see that the photo of the palette itself has so much more bite than the actual swatches. So when you look at those duochromes, it looks like it's gonna be more colorful than it is. You look at the swatches and that purple and the pink with the orange flip kind of disappear in the swatches. And so I did my best to recreate it as best as I could. I don't even know what those actually would look like. I don't have the palette obviously. So we're gonna get into it. It was tough with the silvers, although this silver and the silver in another palette of the big ones, same. Exact same. <laughs> Uh, but let's swatch these out really fast. And these are the ones I'm actually gonna be putting in the palette. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna put them in as I go. So the first shade here is from the Rock Candy palette and this is shade number six. Again, just an icy kind of highlight shade. They love, they love a highlight shade. So that is that one. And I picked the iciest one I could find. Next for this kind of gray taupe, I went with the shade from the Stone Cold Fox palette. This is the shade number nine. I went back and forth between a few different ones. This one doesn't have enough brown in it. I feel like it goes more true gray, but for my options, I felt like it went with the rest of the palette the best, but I do feel like the one in the palette is a little more brown in it. Next, I feel like this one was a pretty good dupe. I swatched a few things out just to get the right tone. This is from the Rock Candy palette though. It's shade number 15. I love the mauve that's in here. Although it is warmer than the other shades, it is a cool leaning mauve and I think it's so pretty. Like almost terracotta too. Really loved that one. Then this is the first duochrome. This one that I picked is from the Smoke and Roses palette. It's shade number 16. And this does have like a peachiness to the pink. It is not a duochrome by any means, but it does have something similar. And I actually feel like this matches the swatches. Like I said, you don't really see the duochrome in the swatches. You only see it kind of like amplified in that photo of the actual palette. Next, I thought this one was pretty good as well. This is from the Stone Cold Fox shade number 21, and it is a gray brown. Mine, I guess, might not have quite as much brown in it, but I still think it's pretty dang good for how deep it is. It was like everything was either gonna be too light or too deep and I felt like this was the right like depth for the palette. Okay, this next shade was so tough. I thought for sure it was gonna be this silver here, but then I would have nothing here for this silver. So this one's from the Lust for Dusk palette. That's what I had to go with. It doesn't quite go and it's kind of weirdly like a, a golden silver color. It has a little bit of warmth to it, but that's the one I could go with. It was the best choice. I did not have the silver that I thought I would. So that one was actually kind of tough. The next shade, I feel like there are so many shades from ColourPop that could be this, where they do a warm based duochrome with like kind of a blue cool shift on it. So I had a lot to choose from. I went with one with a little more purple in it just to kind of pump up the purples in the palette, but there were quite a few to choose from. This one I actually took from my Nightmare Before Christmas palette that came out last year. I thought that was just fun to use. And I really feel like so many of the shadows went with this palette. So this has like a warm red base, but then it has that kind of blue. This almost has like a purpley flip as well, but like a violet shine to it. And I think it's so pretty. And I'm assuming the one in the palette also isn't like super intense. I don't think I've really seen super intense duochromes ever from ColourPop. And then the next shade is also from that same Nightmare Before Christmas palette. And I really loved this. I could have used something else, but I was like, let's do it. This is like a purpley mauve taupe. Love it. I love the depth. It's so soft. This shadow is so soft. I love it. And we're on to the last row. This silver, like I said, there was another one exactly like it, but this one one happens to be from the Rock Candy palette and it's shade number one. It's just a nice solid silver metallic shade, like really full and I'm telling you they were like exact, both of them. So that one's going in. The next shade is like a purple, but again, if you look at the swatches and you look at the palette, it doesn't actually turn purple or that purple on the arm swatched out and I didn't have anything exact. So I decided to go more neutral than purple. I was contemplating going with something like this, again from the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas palette, but I knew that would just throw off the vibe, like throw it off entirely. So I went with this one from the Smoke and Roses palette, really pretty. Like I think I might do my eye look with this because I think it's stunning, such a beautiful color. Not quite 
the color in there, but I think it, it works, it subs. This next shade, I had to go into that Villains palette again, and this is one, the, the duochrome, it shows the purple, but when the swatch, I was like, where's the black? because all you really see in this watch is black. You don't see the like little shimmers. And this is a very black duochrome. This one goes a little bit warmer. It has like the pink, but it also has a little bit of like a yellow, like gold in it as well. But I thought, man, it's actually pretty perfect. And I know it looks so black, but I'm telling you that swatch looks black. So I think that one's pretty good from the Villains palette. And last, a matte gray. This one's a little bit cooler. I had a few different options. I just chose this one. And I thought it had the most like kind of blue going on to it. So that's why I went with it. But yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty standard, just gray. If you have the bigger palettes, I feel like you'll definitely have this one. And there is the palette all in here. I know it looks different. This definitely looks different. This maybe isn't as pink looking. This also in the palette looks like it's gonna be brighter, but I think it's not bad. This is one of the palettes that I was tempted to buy maybe at some place, but it's sold out. So I don't know if they're gonna come back with it or not. I think it might've been a popular release because you can only buy it in like the big bundle. But let's see the swatches compared to their swatches to see how close we really got. I think overall mine's pretty good. Like that bottom half looks decent. I maybe could have put this here and then gone with a different gray. I actually could have done that, I think. And that might help the palette. So let me do that really fast actually. Looking at it a second time, I have some options I think might go better. Okay, I personally like that so much better. I feel like it's more cohesive and I actually do think it matches it a little better. So there it is switched out in the palette, but then I also switched them out on my arm. So I'm glad I made that little tweak, but overall I feel like it's pretty good. And I, I don't know, I like this color story a lot. Even if it's not maybe as bright or the duochromes aren't as great, I still think it's pretty solid and I am excited to actually do an eye look. So this is what we're gonna do an eye look with. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Let's just get into the tutorial. I can't believe I filmed the intro without doing my eye look. Are you kidding me? That's how excited, I was like, let's go. <laughs> I'm just gonna prime really fast using my Sigma base in Sorbet. As I mentioned at the end of the duping, I am gonna be going in with the shadows that I put into the At For A Sight palette. I feel like that palette really was the most enticing to me. So here it is in this lighting. I still think it's pretty similar, even on a different background. I'm first gonna go in, I think with this like mauve shade, I'm pretty into that. And I'm just gonna be putting that first in my outer corner and then as I have less product, I'm gonna work that into my crease. I feel like ColourPop is one of those brands I feel like I'm always talking about, whether it's in like a new launches video, like definitely keeping up with the new stuff. It's like kind of hard to not know about them. But when I think of like what I'm actually using, I don't feel like I use their eyeshadows a ton or as much as I used to, but I do think they're pretty good. Like this is blending so nice. I like that these mattes are easy to work with. Sometimes with really pigmented mattes, it can be a little bit harder to blend out. Whereas these are more what I normally do with like building up. Okay, I don't know what I wanna do from an actual lid shade. I have a few options. I don't know if I wanna do that kind of like purpley duochrome just all over and see how that goes. I love the idea of like this shade all over. I might just do that, but I also love this color too. This is them all swatched out. I'm kind of being drawn to this one, but this is more monochromatic, but maybe I'll just be fun and do the duochrome. I'm gonna do the duochrome. Let's do the duochrome. I don't think I'm gonna lay down a base. I'm just gonna go in with my finger and I hope that looks good. Oh yeah, that looks good. It doesn't have a ton of like chunky glitters or anything. So hopefully I won't get any fallout. All right, we definitely got something grungy going on. Do I feel like a troublemaker? Kind of, kind of. I'm just gonna blend out the edges softly. I'm inspired to get out my silver liner from Kaleidos that came out. So I'm gonna go grab that and some mascara so I can finish up this look. All right, for my brow bone, I'm gonna go in with this light shade here. I'm just gonna dust that very lightly just to get something up there. I'm also gonna bring a little bit of that color on the inner corner, just so we have some light there. For the outer corner, I'm gonna put on this mushroom liner from Urban Decay. That's gonna go out there. And I might tight line a little with it as well. But then on the inner corner, I'm gonna put that silver liner from Kaleidos. This is like a 
really blue gray silver so that's it and then I'm gonna top it with the silver shadow that's in here too it looks so blue right now I remember it looking so gray before but definitely has a blue quality it's so sparkly I almost feel like I don't need to top it I'm kind of bringing it back a little and like mixing them in the middle I'm gonna add a little bit of this shade here it's like a taupey and put that on my lower lash line and the outer edge on top of that liner I might add some of that to the outer corner too. It's not doing a ton, but I just want to deepen it up so it kind of melts together a little better. I'm taking like a flat angled brush and I'm going to go in with that silvery shade and I'm just going to put that on top of the liner on this inner corner. And I'm going to add some of the darker gray in the outer corner. I decided I must have that darker shade in the outer corner too, so I'm doing that. We're really just going wherever the look takes us today. All right, now for a mascara to finish this out. All right, here's the look. Grungy girl, grungy girl, who are you? I love it. I was not expecting the look to go this way, but I love that I did something not as simple as I feel like I normally do, because I thought that's where it was gonna go. I really did, but I like it. I think it's what I would do with that palette. I like the silver. I like that I brought in something else and was like inspired to use another product that I haven't used in a little bit. So yeah, that's the look. I hope you guys liked it. And overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and had some fun with it. I think it's so awesome that you're able to do that with ColourPop. You guys know I just love that as a feature in like any palette. I think it's so great and can be such a fun way to prolong the shininess of your makeup, like reimagine it, move it around, that type of stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.